Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to be creating doors that always open away from you. So let's go into content, create a new folder called blueprints. Go into here, create a blueprint class actor, and we will call it BP uh, door. And we can open that up. Right before we get started on the door, let's make a couple changes to our first person character. This will also work in the third person character. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect this input action fire so we don't spawn our projectile when we click. And then I'm going to go into our capsule component and change the capsule radius to 34 so that we will actually be able to fit through the door. All right, let's go back into BP door and we're gonna make a scene and replace the scene root with a scene. Then let's add two static meshes, one for the door frame and one for the door itself. Now, if you have the starter content enabled, uh, you will be provided with a door frame and a door. So we will be using those. Now we need to drag the door over because the pivot point is on the left. So let's change our snap size to five and move it over 45 units. And the other thing we have to do is set up a collision for the door. The starter content door doesn't come with a collision. So double click on the static mesh right here and go to collision, add box simplified collision. And then in here, I'm gonna scroll down to we get collision, primitives, boxes, open this one. And I'm gonna set the X extent to five. Save that and close it. Now our door will have collision. All right, let's go into our event graph and we can delete these three. We will call a new custom event and it will be called open door. Now we need to do some math to figure out which side of the door we're on. So let's do that now. We need to get our scene, which is in the direct center of our actor. And we want to get our world location. And we need to subtract our uh, player location from this point. So create a begin play, cast to first person character, the object will be get player character, then you can right click right here and promote variable. We will call this player ref. Now let's get our player ref and we will get the actor location. And we can do vector minus vector and plug these in right here. This will get us the distance between our two actors. Then we want to take this output and normalize it. The easiest way of understanding this is it's just converting it to a scale between negative one and one. But we don't want the output to be a vector, we want it to be a float. And we do that with a dot product. Now the other side of the dot product is going to be the forward vector of our scene. And we will plug that in. To give you a little demonstration of what's happening, in the tick, we can just print a string. And we will plug that in. For the duration, I'm just gonna plug this into delta seconds so it doesn't flood our screen. And let's drag a door out into our world and hit play. Now, if you look in the upper left, it's getting covered up by the shift F1, but that'll fade. We have this 0.8 and it gets lower as we get closer. And if we get to the other side, it goes to negative 0.5 and it will slowly ever increasingly get close to negative one as we back up and one on the other side. So we use this to decide which side of the door we are on. So let's go back into PP door and we can delete this and the tick. Now an open door we need to first ask if the door is closed. So let's make a boolean, and we will call it is door closed, and plug it into our condition. By default, we wanna set this to true, because the door is closed. If this is true, we wanna set the door closed to false, because we are opening it. And this is also where we want to define our dot product as a variable. So you can right click here, promote to variable, and we will call this dot product and plug it in right here. 
After this, we want to call a timeline, which will open our door for us. So we can right click and create a timeline. And we will call this open door TL for timeline. And plug this into the play. Now double click on your timeline. In this length here, this is going to be how long it takes to open and close the door. I'm going to set it to half a second. And then we want to add a float track. And we will call this alpha. Right click and add two keys. The first one, will, time will be zero and value will be zero. The second one, time will be 0.5 or however long it takes to open your door and the value will be one. Click these two icons to fill the screen. We can select both of them, right click and choose auto. This will give us a smoother opening and closing. Now on the update, we want to set this door's rotation. So we'll drag off this door and set relative rotation and plug that into the update and we only want to rotate it on the z axis and we can do and we can separate these by getting a make rotator now we only want to rotate on the z axis because when we do it rotates how a door rotates Let's set this back to zero to by default and let's go back to our event graph and in this z we want to get a lerp which stands for linear interpolate and plug the alpha into the alpha. The A will be zero, and the B will either be 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees, depending on which side of the door we're standing on. So we want to get a select from there. And the condition is going to be if the dot product is greater than or equal to zero. I'm doing greater than or equal to, so if in the rare chance you get exactly on zero, it will know what to do. So we'll plug that into pick A, and on A we want to set this to 90, and on B we want to set this to negative 90. On finished, we want to ask if the uh, door is now closed. So let's pull off this direction and get a switch on E timeline direction, because we only want to set this when we are reversing our timeline. Speaking of reversing, we want to plug this false into reverse. So if our door is open and we click, we want to reverse this timeline to close the door. Once that's finished, off of backwards, we will set is door closed to true. And we should be almost good to go. The door is all set up. Now we just have to actually be able to open it because at the moment we have no way to interact with it. So if we go into our first person character, we can create an input left mouse button. So when we click, it's going to create a line trace from our camera to a certain amount of units away from our camera directly in front of us. Line trace by channel is what we will be doing. Let's right click and actually let's just pull in the first person camera or the third person camera if you're using the third person template and we will get the world location and the forward vector. The world location will be our start value, and our end value will be our forward vector multiplied by a float. This float will be how far away we can reach, how long the line will be from our camera to this many units in front of us. I like 500 as a, as a good default. And we will add these together and put that into the end location. Now out of out hit, we want to break this and open it up. And here in hit actor, we will cast to BP door. So if we hit the BP door, we will continue in this execution. And if we don't, it'll go in this one. So as BP door, we want to call the event open door. And that will automatically connect this for you. So we can compile, save, and go here. So let's test this out. Let's click on the door and it opens away from us. Let's click on it again and it closes. Now let's go to the other side click and it opens away from us still and we can close it again now let's open it go to the other side and we can still close it normally we can also close and open the door before it opens and closes all the way and it won't have any issues such as doing things like this and just switching around and we've eliminated all bugs so this will always work in terms of opening away from you. Alright, I hope you found this lesson useful. 
Um, please consider subscribing uh, to get more content like this, and also join us in a journey of remaking the entire Breath of the Wild game in Unreal Engine 4. Um, and I will hope to see you there.